Welcome into Harmonious at Lunch. I got a surprise little bonus mini series for you to start out the year. I figured, hey, this is the perfect time, at least when I'm launching this, to sit down, figure out where are we going? What is happening? It's a new year. And the, here's something that I've realized from being in business for over a decade at this point. That is, if you do the same thing on December 31st that you do on January 1st, but you expect different results the following December 31st, that is the definition of insanity. Isn't it, right? I mean, you've heard that before. I think Einstein said it. Doing the same thing and expecting different results is the definition of insanity. So why do we do that as business owners? We do the same business as usual actions every single day, day in, day out, year in, year out, yet we set bigger and bigger goals every year and we're surprised when we don't reach them. So I said, okay, we need to stop this. First of all, we need to figure out how do we get from here to there, wherever there is for you. I want you to define that clearly and we're going to get there in this mini series, but I want to disrupt the way you think about your goal setting, about how your year could look and what you should be putting down on paper or virtually, however you do your goals, that's up to you. But the moral of the story is if you want to achieve your goals in business, in life, wherever, you have to do things a little bit differently if you want different results. So first and foremost, let's disrupt your thinking right there. If you are setting bigger goals, different goals, you're trying to achieve things you've never achieved before in business, and you're not planning on operating any differently, well, you're in for quite the surprise at the end of the year, and it's a surprise you're not going to like. So let's get ahead of it. Now, let's ground again real quick. Harmonious. What is harmonious? It is an acronym for the 10 business disciplines that are fundamental to business success across the board. It comes from our time working with the Fortune 100 down to small businesses and entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, and everything in between. These are the 10 elements every single business needs not only to have, but to master in order to thrive. It's things like strategic planning, change management, metrics, but those are boring names, right? We don't want to give them boring names. Business should be fun. Growing and scaling a business should be a good time. And that's what we're here to do at What If. You see the logo behind me, the top here in green. That's a play button because we like to play here. We like to have fun. And that's exactly what we did. So we switched up the names a little bit. So instead of strategic planning, we have navigation. Instead of change management, we have modify. Instead of human resources. They sound like robots. First of all, we said it's home. Humans optimize in a meaningful environment. Well, I'm not going to go through all the 10 letters right now, but I just want to call your attention to why it is the way it is. A, it's foundational. It cannot be broken. You need this, these 10 disciplines. You have them in your business. It's just, are they optimized? And second, you need to understand how they link together. That's the magic in the harmonious acronym and running a harmonious business. It's a model that links together. There's no such thing as departments, no such thing as, as silos. And we're looking at business the wrong way, ultimately. So what we're here to do is disrupt the way you think about your business, your goals, your year, your planning, all of that stuff. And we're going to get it done in a quick little three-part mini series. And I think there might be a bonus episode too. So I, I know the guy who's recording them, just a heads up. Um, so stick around three-part mini-series, and we're going to get you one step closer to your goals for this year and next year and the next year. This is a system. It's a formula, a framework. So use it as often as you set goals. But let me just give you a little hint. Please take this seriously. Take notes and actually do the work. If you're going to go through this and listen to it just because you like hearing things in your ear, whether you're working out, driving, Maybe you're at your desk right now, whatever it is, if you're watching or listening, wherever you are, I encourage you, if this resonates with you, go back and listen a second time or take notes the first time. But the only way to make a change that will actually last is to implement what you hear. I'm giving you not only content, but the context of how to hear it. That's where most content falls short on the internet these days is it's just vomit of information and it's, you don't know where to put it. You don't know what to do with it in your business. We need to change that. And we, we need to say, okay, where does this all fit? That's what the harmonious acronym will give to you. That is what a harmonious business model is for. It is the context to hang everything that comes at you in business, all of your problems, challenges, opportunities, bright ideas, shiny objects, 
you can put them somewhere in these 10 disciplines and you know exactly if they belong in your business or outside of your business. And why don't we start right there? Today's episode, I want to really hone in on the four D's. The four D's are is a system that we use to understand how we tackle pro projects, opportunities, the shiny objects that come our way, and problems and challenges too. So as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, you know from experience there is no shortage of problems and there is no shortage of opportunities. Every single ad you see on Facebook or YouTube is some other opportunity, right? Some new software, a free trial, a spend $500 on this and get that, three extra leads, all of this stuff. And we are inundated with opportunities that all sound great. You know why? Because people understand marketing. Okay, I get that. But we also think they all sound great because we have no focus. And it's not because you have ADHD. Stop assigning labels. That's a made-up thing. I used to say that I had ADHD. I just had a lack of focus. I have a, I have a skill set that I am gifted at. I, I can hyper-focus on some things, and I want nothing to do with other things. That doesn't mean I have ADHD. That means I have an opportunity to harness a superpower. You don't either. So let's dive in there. The four Ds are really just a way to stay focused and harness opportunity and push everything else to the side. What are these four Ds? They are do, delegate, delay, and delete. And most of the time, entrepreneurs do them in that order. So I want to disrupt the way we think about that. First of all, you understand those four words, right? At, at their surface, at the core, we know what those words mean. We use them probably every single day, multiple times a day. But why do we start with do? Why as entrepreneurs and business owners do we always start with do when something comes our way, whether it's a challenge that comes up and it seems urgent and we have to take care of it, we say, okay, I'll do that. Uh, yeah, send it to me, send me an email, whatever. I'll do that. Well, this might be, well, I'm telling you it's a bad mindset and it's a bad way to approach problems and opportunities like this. But we do the same thing when we see those ads on the internet and it's $500 to three extra lead flow or um, I don't know, burn fat in half the time with three times the carbs. I'm obviously making these things up. I don't have good research on, on ads like this. But when we see this stuff, we say, okay, immediately we can do them. And we say, yes, 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 yes. We are yes people as entrepreneurs. It's our worst trait and our best trait all wrapped in one. Instead of first saying do, we need to completely flip the structure of the four Ds. It's not do, delegate, delay, delete. It's actually delete, delay, delegate, do. So let's keep diving in here. How do we understand really how to break down this framework and, and how we can structure it to leverage it for growth this year? Well, it goes back actually one step further, and that is understanding and having a clear focus on what you are doing and what you are not doing as a business, not, a, not an individual, not as the owner, the entrepreneur, the leader, whatever, understanding where your business is going and having clear objectives to chase as a business. Most of the time, most of the entrepreneurs that I talk to, they have goals, they have resolutions, they have ideas of where they want to go. But have you ever seen a river that had an idea of where it wanted to go? No, it has a very clear path that's been carved out from decades, centuries, millennia of doing the same thing over and over. And that path gets deeper and more ingrained. And it changes every now and then. A big storm comes and that river's path could change. You could have uh, rocks fall from a mountain and completely alter that river's path. Or human beings put up a dam and they completely alter that river's path. They make it a reservoir and then a smaller river. And then bigger rivers branch out from all sides. I want you to think about your business like that. Instead of just being the ocean where you have water everywhere, let's be more like a river. Let's actually get somewhere and get there consistently instead of just being all over the place. Maybe that's a good analogy. Maybe it's not. I don't know. You can ponder over it yourself. But here's, here's the way I really want you to just understand this and break this down. If you don't know where you're going, anything will get you there. I'm pretty sure that quote is from Alice in Wonderland. I don't know. I heard it one time. Let me know in the comment section where it's actually from and if you've heard that that quote as well. But 
what you really need to understand is you need a place to go. You need to have a destination. It doesn't have to be set in stone. Your destination could change. Your destination does not have to be it for the whole year, for the whole quarter, for the whole decade, whatever. A lot of people get so hung up in, ah, I don't know what to choose. I'm so scared. What if I choose the wrong thing? So you change it. It's not a huge deal. What did I just tell you about the river? Human beings could put up a dam and change the flow of the river. That's how you change in your business. You could just simply put up a dam, change the way things flow, as long as there's metrics behind it to really understand and, and spread the word to your team why you're making that change. You don't just go changing things left and right, but you can change the path of a river, but it's way more effective when you have a path for the river in the first place. So back to the four Ds, right? How do we understand this? How do we know where we're going? At the very least, pick a destination. We're going to start there. We're going to have something to march towards. And then we can understand what is the filter that we're using to make sure we're not saying yes to the wrong things, no to the right things, and vice versa. That's, what the, that's the four Ds. So step one is make sure you have a clear vision for your company. And I will also just drop this in. Creating the vision for your company is not part of this little mini series. We do have a workshop that we host on this uh, once a month, at least once a month. Um, if you go to whatif.com slash chaos, we will help you understand how to calm the chaos in your business and get clarity on where you are going. So that would be step one. That's my advice. Whatif.com slash chaos. Go there, check it out, sign up. It's a three-day workshop and it'll get you clear on where you're going. So if you want to do that before we dive deeper, I suggest you take in all this information. It'll help you digest all of that too. But that is a solid resource and we've helped many entrepreneurs skyrocket their success from just that information alone. That's my little sales pitch for you, but it's free. So not really a sale. So the four Ds, we have do, and we, the way we think about it wrong as entrepreneurs, then we have delegate. So when this word, I think it's overused and it's, it's kind of a trigger word for me because everyone says, oh, just delegate it, delegate it, hire a VA, hire someone from the Philippines. I mean, yeah, but no, definitely no. I mean, why are we delegating in the first place? And this is why the four D's are backwards. Because if you just go straight from, uh, you know, I can't do it, but it's a yes. Like it's a definitely something we have to do and just delegate it. Let's review the 80-20 rule. What if that's all just a waste of time and we're not chasing the right outcome? And if you don't have the vision clearly established in the first place, why are we delegating something that's not going to get us closer to our vision? Again, if you don't have a destination set, anything will get you there. So we're saying yes, we don't have the time to do it. So we pay somebody else to do it, or we hire a service to do it. We're now wasting our money, their time, and all of this effort is for nothing. You can see going down this path is obviously leading to a bad result. And it's the result most businesses get because they don't have the destination and they don't have this filter of the four Ds in place. D number three is delay. Now, this one is a little bit better because maybe it'll give you some time to think about the decision you've made, the yes that you've said or the no. But if you can't do it, you can't delegate it. It has to be you, but you have to delay it. Then, okay. We've, we've put it off our calendar for at least the time being. So it's maybe it's important, it's not urgent, or maybe it's not urgent or important, but we still feel like we have to do it. We've delayed it for some future date. Again, you've still said yes to the thing without understanding if it's going to move the needle towards your vision ultimately and your business without understanding where you're going. So you can see why it's so, so important for you to have this vision clearly established and the destination established because this whole filter is dependent on having the vision in place. Or if you don't want to use the word vision, having the destination in place. You don't have to have the path. You just have to have the destination. That's the important part. So we have do, delegate, delay. The fourth D would be delete. That's easy. That would be if you say no to it. But again, the reason most entrepreneurs do this backwards is because we always think about how can we do it or how can we make it work by doing, deleting, or delegating, delaying, 
And then we get to delete ultimately if it's something that we feel like we can't handle or can't do or is just really a bad fit for, for our company, ourselves, our calendar, whatever it may be. Here's my proposition. And here is what I am proposing you do immediately. Again, assuming that you have the vision in place, you have the destination in place. But even if not, just try to switch that around. So instead of do, delegate, delay, delete, go delete, delay, delegate, do. If you start with every opportunity, and I know this is possible because we do this and I do this every day. And I also know that because we have the vision set and we have our quarterly objectives set so clearly and set in stone, it's so easy to say delete. When an opportunity comes our way and it does not fit in one of our quarterly objectives, it's an immediate no. If it's a maybe, we could talk about delaying it, but then it goes on the delay board and we don't even revisit it until planning comes up for the next quarter. So for us, when an opportunity comes up, this could be someone sliding into your DMs. This could be an ad on YouTube or Facebook or wherever, or a billboard on the highway or a cold call, whatever it is. If something comes up and it does not fit clearly in one of our three monthly, excuse me, quarterly objectives, it does not get entertained at all. There is no circumstance where something not in those three objectives would ever get a yes in that quarter. It could be a yes for as soon as next quarter, no sooner. That is powerful because I'm immediately distraction free. I know exactly where I'm going, what I'm looking at, how I'm going to get there in the short term, and then anything else we could at the best delay. Now that brings me to delay. If you say, you know, this is something that I feel the company would benefit from, we should do, we should take on, then we look to delay it. Again, if it's not part of those three quarterly objectives, it is getting delayed. Hands down, it's getting delayed. We're going to delay it for as far out as possible, but at the very earliest, the next quarter. So if it's how to lose 15 pounds of belly fat in three weeks, and that is not part of my diet plan for that quarterly sprint, it's going on next quarter. We're going to see the results of this quarter first, and then we'll revisit that if we need to. And this is where we get a lot of pushback because people will say, oh, but there's a discount. I can save 12.5% if I take this offer right now. First of all, if they're offering a discount now, they'll probably offer a discount in the very near future. And second of all, if the discount really, really is going away, well, you know what? That's called opportunity cost. And it's probably better to see out your current results because the cost of switching is way higher than your opportunity costs. We can break that down. I have math to back that up if you really need it, but you're just going to have to trust me from this short episode that your cost to switch and the cost of never getting in flow or in momentum and actually building towards a result is so much higher than the cost of missing out on a 12.5% discount or whatever stupid number that you're going to come up at me with. So you're going to delete, you're going to delay if possible, then you're going to delegate. If it's still a yes, you can't delay it. You have to get through, you have to do it. So you can't delete it. You, you can't delay it too much further. And then this would be not so much an opportunity, but a problem. Let's say a problem comes up in your business and your day-to-day -day roles and you, you must do it. It's urgent. You can't delay it. You then look to delegate, whether it's someone in your team, a VA, an outsourcing service, a third party, whatever it is, you look to delegate it as best as possible. And you have to understand letting go as the owner, as the entrepreneur, the leader is the most important skill because you can't have your hands in everything. Nobody wants to work for you if you do, among another a, a number of other reasons. But also your calendar gets so bogged down. There's no focus if you have your hand in everything and you can't show up and do the other tasks that you do really well. You can't do them really well because you're so your, your brain and your mind and your time is so split between other activities. So you have to delegate and you have to get those things off of your calendar, off of your plate and get them to people who can do them. Are people going to do things as well as you the very first time? No, of course not. But once they're experts in it after a couple of times, they'll probably end up training you on how to do that because they'll be better at it. They'll be the expert and you won't. So it's short-term pain, long-term big gain when you start to delegate and delegate effectively. Now, what else does delegate tie into in business? A, a lot of it ties into 
your processes. You have to make sure that you have a detailed process in place. That would be the, um, the order function, one of the O's in harmonious. And also navigate. You have to make sure your processes and what you're doing are tied to your navigation, your company's why, your company's vision, your company's core values. So this is where we start to talk about the links. And I mentioned that in the beginning of this episode, everything is linked together and we have to leverage those links. So if you're going to delegate, make sure you have a reason for delegating. It's tied to the company mission and vision. It's tied to the individual or the role mission and vision. And everybody knows why we're doing it. Don't just delegate random things, but because we've flipped the four D's, we understand that no, if we're delegating something, it's very, very important. So we can take that level of confusion off the table. We can then understand, okay, here's exactly how we want to do it for the best results, for the most efficient results, and for the best outcome for our customers. And that is going to get you a much better result than ever before in your delegation. I promise you that one little shift. Now, we're going to get to the final D, which is do ultimately. We call this the golden line. When you flip the four Ds and you try your best to delete, delay, and delegate everything before it gets to you for doing, this is called the golden line. These are the things that you, as the entrepreneur, the CEO, the leader, the business owner, the founder, you can uniquely do yourself and must do. These would be things like uh, public appearances, PR, speaking, whatever. If it's something that you have to do as the face of the business, fantastic. By all means, please go ahead and do it. If it's the CEO time of designing where the business is going, please go ahead and do it. If you're working on the business, those are the important tasks that you uniquely can do to drive the direction of the company. We want as much of that on your calendar as humanly possible. That's what we're really trying to do with the four Ds and flipping them upside down. It's not about just deleting and getting rid of and delaying as many things as possible. It's about making sure that what does end up on your calendar leverages the 80-20 rule and is the 20% that's going to get the 80% output. It's the littlest input for the maximum result. And that alone will skyrocket your business this year and beyond. If you just take that little shift and flip the way you do things and the way you see opportunities and challenges, that right there could totally change the game in your business this year. All right. So now that we have the four Ds down, we understand this is the, the framework for clarity into what we're doing, how we handle opportunities and challenges. We're going to come back in the next episode with how to you leverage this and actually scale sustainably this year and beyond. And I want to just say, before we get to the end of this episode and before we dive into episode number two, you don't have to follow the industry standards or what you could conceive of as a scalable achievement. You, you don't have to say, oh, I could probably grow by 15% this year, maybe 22 and a third percent if I'm lucky. Pick a number. I would say if you can implement what I'm going to go through on this, on this small little mini series, if you pick a number, I promise you we can help you achieve it. Implementing everything we teach at What If takes averages and standards off the table. We don't run businesses like the normal business model. And that's the whole point. The business model, the standard business model is broken. That's why we have Harmonious, right? Up there. So pick a number, be aggressive, get excited about it. And let's dive into episode two. I can't wait to see you back there. But first, write the 4D mix down understand how to use it and start looking at your calendar, your opportunities and your challenges differently and start with deleting and do way less doing. Focus on that golden line. All right. I will see you in episode number two of this little mini series.